I'm live and it occurs to me that I'm two minutes late and I apologize for that. I, my mind just went elsewhere and I forgot what time it was and I forgot that I had a responsibility to you, our faithful followers and uh, viewers to, um, to be here on time for our live stream. So uh, my apologies. Welcome, welcome back. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. And welcome to another trippy food live stream and another grab bag live stream. So we have our grab bag. Today's grab bag is from Generic Trader Joe's. We'll be doing that. We expect to have a visit from Doodle at some point in time. I know you guys miss him. Let's see how many people we got. We had six people on or six people connected. <clears throat> I'm on live chat and I'm only see seeing two people in there for now. I see Ice Hand and I see Miguel. And there's Julie. Now it's a party. Hi, Jules. How you doing, hon? How are the kids? How is everybody? Uh, Jared Tiano has entered the room. Tom has entered the room. Now it's a kumquat party because Tom is here. So um, I guess Janice will be here in, in a bit. So how is everybody this week? Did everybody have a good week? It's been a nice long week. I guess a regular week. So we we're in, we're at that kind of uncomfortable spot between I guess it would be President's Day between President's Day and Memorial Day where we have no holidays, right? So th those of us in the uh, in the working world um, we have no holidays in between there. So um, so I think it's almost eh, Almost three months, almost three months with no holidays. So, you know, if you got vacation time, use them if you got them. Adam Hebb has entered the room. Let's see who else we got. We got uh, everybody saying hi. All the niceties are taking place. I have my tea. I made this a while ago. So last time I, I kind of learned my lesson because I put it in, in here and I put the top on and it saved the heat. And and so I took went to take a sip of it and burned the inside of my mouth. But as you can see, there's still steam coming off of this. I don't know why. Maybe it's just that this contain this particular container holds the heat really well. It's still very, very hot. So let me see. No, it's not too bad. So uh, that is <clears throat> uh, lemon zinger tea with uh, ginger and turmeric tea. So you know, two different tea bags. A little bit of lemon. A little bit of honey. Good for the throat. So I still I have this kind of uh, scratchy allergy kind of throat thing going on. So I I figured I could drink this during the course of the live stream and it would help me out. So we'll see. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. It is super insulated. It's very heavy on its own, and you can tell it's like double thickness. So I, I don't know what's inside. You know, could be fiberglass, could be like kryptonite. I don't know something inside there, but. Uh, you're right, Jules. It is super insulated. You still sick? What's the, it's uh, I, I think it's allergies or something. Because so I got past the thing with the fever and the the pain shooting through the side of my head and everything. That's all gone. But now I just got this throat thing. This you know, kind of post nasal drip. Not not meaning to to gross anybody out. So yeah, kind of gets have that thing still going. How is everybody out there? How is everybody feeling out there? Uh, <laughs> beautiful Julie, the beautiful Janice, and the slightly less beautiful old guy. I don't think he'd be offended by that. Uh, let's see. Did I miss anything? Did I miss anybody? I think I got everybody. Miguel, I got you, right? I, uh, yeah, the number's going up. There's 10. Well, get better like when that witch turned you into the new. Yeah, I got better. I think I still have that. I, got, I, haven't, I haven't worn that shirt in a while. So I remember you got me that shirt. About uh, she turned me into a newt. I got better. So I do actually have that Monty Python. I think there's a second. You just recently got me another Monty Python shirt, which is the uh, spam egg, spam, spam, bacon, and sausage and spam. I think it is. But so you know, now I have two Monty Python shirts. So there we go. Uh, good. A little sick, but okay. I just I don't know how that affects uh, my voice. Speaking of my voice, because sometimes the audio kind of gets you know, messed up or whatever. So how is the audio? How is the video? Is everything okay? The volume's okay? Do I need to dial it back a little bit? Um, you know, is, is, is there any lag or anything like that? The other thing is, I think there's a way to fix it so that it's kind of mirrored. Uh, not mirrored, I'm sorry. So it's flipped so that, you know, if I point over here, my finger goes over here instead of over there, which is there to you. So this mirrored now. 
Um, but the thing is, if I flip it, I don't know if it flips it for you guys as well. So in other words, like if you see it's here, I got to get used to that where it says the bangles. And maybe if if that's flipped and, may, and maybe if it's flipped, it's easier for me. But then it says the the Selganab, right? So who knows? It's OK. Everything's OK. Everything's good. All right. There we go. Janice, did I say hello to you? Did I catch? I didn't see you sneak in the room. Where, where's like, maybe that's the first thing you said. No, no, I, I got you. I got you already, right? All right. Just want to make sure. Just want to make sure I got everybody. We had 11 people. Ah! I, I'm just used to, before, it used to be like, if I point there, which is my there, your there, not my there, um, it would work. So, yeah, let's do this. So there, right there is that number. And it says 10. It did say 11. So somebody left. I offended somebody. We already have our adult beverage sitting up here. So you guys can peruse that. It is 108 p.m. My time, Pacific time. We're waiting from uh, Greg of tomorrow. So uh, hopefully he, he will show up. Um, at least poke his head in because, you know, it's a it's a Monday work day for him. But it would be good to see him. Just having a little episode, folks. He'll be OK. Well, we think. I'm going to have a little bit more of this. I almost took my eye out. I would like to, um, I'd like to try taking that. Um, so Jules, when I was in uh, Massachusetts, you were giving me those allergy pills and I think that they helped. So I think I may like take a trip to Costco later on and see if I can get some of those. Ah, yeah, uh, no, no. I mean, you can see the steam coming off of it, but for some reason when you sip it, it's not that hot. Not like last week when I actually burnt my mouth. Uh, Doodle is out of chicken snacks, so I have these grain-free dog, dog treats with peanut butter and banana. I'm tempted to try these, but let's see if it says anything. Uh, made with simple ingredients like real peanut butter and dried bananas. These are tasty as me, plus they're made grain-free ingredients, so you can feel great about letting your pup go bananas for them, the only fruit best friend. Let's see what the ingredients are. Chickpeas, peanut butter, peanuts, cane, molasses. This is odd because I don't think you really should put sugar in something for dogs, but that's okay. Ground coconut, dried banana, sunflower oil, tapioca starch, and natural banana flavor. Citric acid, because there's citric acid in everything. Uh, mixed tocopherols, which I think is that mouse that used to be on the Ed Sullivan show. Um, those of you who aren't old enough to remember, ask somebody who is. Uh, and rosemary extract. It sounds good. Let's see. Feeding guidelines, feed as between meal snack, a trick or training reward. Feed treats whole or break in pieces. Always monitor your dog while treating. Please provide fresh drinking water to your dog at all times. This product is intended for intermittent or supplemental feeding only. Reflows packages. I don't see anything here that says that this is not um, not compatible for human consumption. So I'm going to try one. Shape it a little dog bone. Crunchy. <clears throat> but they're not... They're not the texture of milk bone. So if you've ever eaten a milk bone, it has that kind of almost tastes like there's little rocks in it, which I think is bone. I think it's ground up bone. But this is all plant based. There's no there's no dairy in there. Oh, I taste banana. I actually taste banana in there. Which is weird. No, no banana flavor. There is natural banana flavor. Not so much the peanut butter. I'm not getting the peanut butter so much. And it doesn't taste like there's a lot of sugar in there. There's kind of like a weird, um, like, flowery aftertaste. I don't mean flowery like flowers. I mean flowery like flower, F-L-O-U-R, kind of aftertaste there. And you get that kind of gritty stuff stuck in your teeth and everything. So it's not fun to eat. It does taste pretty good as far as the banana goes. I'm, like I said, not getting too much peanut butter. I am getting banana in there. The flavor is not too bad. So um, if I was a dog, I would go ahead and give that a big, big thumbs up from a person standpoint and maybe thumbs in the middle. What does it say thumbs in the middle? Because um, it, it's not really like a cookie. It's not really like a cracker. It does have some good flavor and everything, but, you know, not something I would eat on a regular basis. But, you know, if you're prepared to give something to your pet, you know, you should try it yourself. Uh, unless it's like cat food. Cat food's not, it's not a good idea to try cat food. 
because uh, cat food has, especially uh, like meat-based cat food, because it has a lot of stuff in it that the cats can process, but we can't as people. So uh, eating cat food is not a good idea. Ah. All right, there we go. Um, we take them daily. They make a big difference. Probably not overnight, but they will. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it takes like a week or so. Jules, if I'm not mistaken, it takes about a week or so for those to kick in. So you don't really notice anything, you know, for the first few days. But I'm, I'm definitely going to try those. So Ed Sullivan had a really, a really big shoe. That's right. He had a really big shoe. Now, Jules, you probably know Ed Sullivan from watching old clips of the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. That's probably what you know Ed Sullivan from. And um, one of the uh, one of the interesting stories about the Beatles on Ed Sullivan is because they they were on uh, the Ed Sullivan show several times. One of the times they were on Ed Sullivan show, <clears throat> there was uh, the cast of the um, I'm going to say Broadway play, but I don't know if it was Broadway. I think it was probably in like in England, but you know a, a a Broadway show kind of thing. It was the cast of Oliver that was uh, that was out around the same time, and they were on the Ed Sullivan show the same night as the Beatles. And the one play, I, I, I turned it, I think he played the Artful Dodger. The, the, the kid who was playing the Artful Dodger was backstage when the Beatles were playing. And he saw the Beatles playing and he saw the reaction to the Beatles playing. And he thought to himself, I want to do that. Or I want that. I want, I want to be a, a, like a singer or whatever in front of all these people. And I, I want that. And it turns out that that kid that uh, that played anyone want to throw throw it in if you know what know what i'm talking about uh that kid that played the artful dodger that was in the production of oliver that was on the same show the same ed sullivan show one of the ed sullivan shows that the beatles was in was in fact davy jones of the monkeys there you go janice you got it davy jones of the monkeys so um so yeah he was he was backstage he was he was in the performance of um I think it was like Consider Yourself at Home, I think, whatever the name of that song was. I think they did that on the Ed Show. And again, he was influenced by the Beatles being backstage when they were on the Ed Sullivan Show. And the rest is history. Joshua Maxwell has entered the room. Welcome, Joshua. Did you read a card? I did not, Tom, but I haven't oh, I haven't done a um, I haven't done a snack or a beverage yet. So but I will, thank you for reminding me, I do have my cards here, so we will be reading a card before we get into our, um, unless you thought that the whole Davy Jones, Beatles, Ed Sullivan thing was, you know, part of the trivia or something, but, you know, it's not, because we do food and travel, actually, we do food and travel, the, the, card, the, the cards, the trivia cards are strictly food, we should do some travel, I'm going to see if I can find some travel uh, cards and then work those in too. And we'll do some tri some travel trivia. I think that would be kind of cool. Because our focus, I mean, obviously it's hard to do a travel live stream. I think if we do, I think we can, if we can show you videos and show you um, pictures and stuff, I think maybe we can do a travel live stream. And maybe we ought to work to, towards doing that. So maybe sometime in the near future, I will figure out a way so we can do a travel live stream. That, how, how do you guys feel about that? I, I know you tune in on Sundays to see the unusual stuff that we're going to eat and drink, uh, but how would you feel about a travel live stream where we're just kind of talking about travel and stuff? And maybe we, maybe we can have like a beverage and a couple of snacks or something like that. But how would you guys, would you be interested in that? Would you be interested in watching that? Or, or do you do you watch this or do you participate in this because it's specifically food? So let me know. Legend, legend has it the Stones were on Sullivan the first time. Bruce is one of them to wear matching uniforms like the nice Beatles. The Stones went out and rented Nazi uniforms. I don't remember the, the Stones wearing Nazi uniforms on the on the Ed Sullivan show. I do know uh, the, I do know the story about when the Stones were on the Ed Sullivan show and they were going to do let's was it let's spend the night together. Let's spend. I think it's this. Let's, let's spend the night together, I think, is the song, is the Beatles song. And um, Ed Sullivan told him, you can't, you can't say that. Um, you can say, you can only say, you know, let's, let's spend some time together or something. And, um, and so the, the Stones, who were not used to being told what to do, went out there and, and Mick Jagger said, let's spend some mm together. So he didn't actually say anything. And then after they performed, um, Ed Sullivan or one of the group, the people from Ed Sullivan show told them, 
you will never be on the Ed Sullivan show again. And Mick Jagger said something like that. We just were. So, um, so yeah, um, they got off on uh, Ed Sullivan's uh, wrong side. I think the Doors did something similar. Um, I, I think it was like whether well, you're going to do "Light My Fire" and they they wanted him to censor some of the words in "Light My Fire." And I think it was something very similar uh, happened with the Doors as well. Uh, I think Tom meant because you ate the dog treat. Oh, maybe. And like I said, there's nothing in the ingredients that that really. Uh, cautioned me that I shouldn't be eating those and everything. It just seemed like decent ingredients. Just, you know, uh, texture-wise, it left a little bit to be desired. And then there was that kind of aftertaste and on, on the tongue just wasn't that, not crazy. So, um, but again, not really reviewing these. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying Tom was mentioning, I didn't read a card before I ate the dog treat. Yeah, that's okay. Cause it wasn't really part of the, the whole thing. Oh, that would be cool. That would be fun. Uh, they didn't wear them. The producers rented and let them wear whatever they had planned. Oh, okay. Probably a good idea. Like, we can wear these Nazi uniforms or we can wear what we plan to wear. Wear what you plan to wear. That's fine. Then the same with the doors and light my fire. Yeah, I think I think we just said that. So you you um, you back up my story. And John King is in the room. Welcome, John King. Good to see you again. Um, okay. You said, hey, Val, up there, but I was busy yapping, so I didn't see that. So, so welcome, uh, welcome, John. Good to see you. Light my fire, not say higher. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. Was I know there was something very specific about the song that they wanted him to. He, they wanted him to censor something, and they and they did it. So uh, now, how about maggot, maggot bobbing instead of apples? That would be very difficult <coughs> because, as you know, maggots are very tiny, so it would be very difficult to bob for maggots. Um, I think if you stuck your head in there, you would end up take, coming out of the water with maggots all over your head and almost none of them in your mouth. So unless you swallowed a bunch of water with maggots in it, which doesn't really seem like fun. I, I think if you're going to do that, I would think you, you would want to use like uh, witchetty grubs or something, you know, something a with a little bit more substance to it. Maybe uh, tomato worms <coughs> or horn worms. Something that's a little bit bigger, I think, might be easier to bob for those than bobbing for maggots. Maggots, tiny little things. I don't think it would work too well. He'd drown. I would drown. I would. Yes, hornworms, Jules. That would work. Hornworms would work. Let's, let's try it with a straw. There we go. As you can see, I've just been talking for like 15 minutes and I started coughing. Well, it's 1.20. We might as well get started. Here, Here is... Yeah, that's right. Here is our adult beverage. You get to look at that for a minute. I'm going to go ahead and read a card. I, in the words of Harrison Ford, I got a bad feeling about this. Um, it, it's weird. It's really weird. We'll, we'll talk about those in a second. Uh, can you eat these bugs? Remember when you horrified the pet store girl? Yeah, exactly. Can you eat these? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, but, the, but, what, but the thing is, I do... Um, if I'm going to get live insects, I do go to pet stores to get them because they're raised specifically for food for the uh, animals. And so they don't have stuff in them. Uh, they're raised there. It's not like they went into the dumpster and grabbed bugs that they found in the dumpster. They raised them and, um, and they know what they've been eating and everything. And, and so I go in there because they're, they're made to feed frogs and lizards and, you know, things along those lines, uh, those lines. So I know that they're, they're good to eat. So that's why if you're going to get some, if you're going to try to eat a live insect, I'm not saying eat it live, but I'm saying if you're going to try to like cook with insects and you want to make sure you have a good insect to cook with, go to a pet store. Uh, just, you know, make sure that they, there's nothing specific that would be harmful to you. And, uh, and that'd be the best place to get them. So that's my thing about eating bugs. Uh, <clears throat> unless you go to like an Asian grocery where they have something like silkworm pupa, I know they have those crickets you can get. Um, I have not seen crickets in any of the uh, groceries here, but there was a Vietnamese grocery store in Portland. Um, I think it's called Fubon Market. And uh, they had frozen crickets in the frozen food section and everything. I haven't seen them anywhere else, but, uh, but you know, <clears throat> either get them in a, in, a, in a Asian grocery where you can vouch for them or uh, go, go to a pet store and get them. So the question is, speaking of that, uh, is uh, Guai Quan is a dish that originated in which country? Guai Quan is a dish that originated in one country. Uh, I can't speak for the letters that have little things on them, so I'll just use the, um, the 
uh, Arabic, no, what do they call it? English lettering, I guess. G O I C U O N, Guai Quan is a dish that originated in which country? So there we go. <clears throat> Let's talk about this because this makes me nervous. So this is from 450 North Brewing Company. Uh, 450 North Brewing Company was founded by David and Brenda Simmons in Columbus, Indiana in 2012. This is Banana Choco Taco Slushy XXL. This frightens me a little bit. Uh, it is a smoothie style sour with ale with banana, fudge, waffle cone, vanilla ice cream, and milk chocolate. Well, let me repeat that again, just in case you didn't hear me the first time. It is a smoothie su style sour ale with banana, fudge, waffle cone, vanilla ice cream, and milk chocolate. This is by far the strangest adult beverage that we've ever done on this live stream, I think. Uh, it looks good. Mm, maybe. Uh, so I was talking to Claudia about that, and I was telling her what it was, and she goes, that sounds like it could be good. And I'm like, we'll see. I mean, it's a sour ale with, like, ice cream and stuff in it. So I, I don't know. We'll see. Sounds like the runs. Well, sounds like you're running away from it. Let's give it a shot. See what's going on. Again, Ariel and Richard Simmons and Thing and Slim, they're all on vacation because we don't need them today because we're doing um, cans. I, I don't like pouring from a can, but... Oh, oh. Okay, that's odd. I should have shaked this. I should have shaked this because it looks like, look how thick that is. My God. It smells like banana. It really smells like banana. Wow. That's weird. That is weird. All right. Cheers. Beer with a side of maggots. Well, you know what, John? To be honest with you, like, let's say you're sitting at a bar, right? And they're going to put crunchy stuff, crunchy, salty stuff in front of you so that you'll drink more, right? So, you know, pretzels, peanuts, stuff like that. Put some roasted maggots there. That's fine. Yeah, that's a that's actually a good thing. I would say, like, instead of a side of maggots, you just have, like, a bowl of... of roasted maggots there to snack on and then you'll you'll drink that entire beer and you'll ask for a second one give it a stir i could do that it doesn't have like a head on it but i think it's because it's so thick that was gross blame myself Honestly, it's not that bad. It's weird, though. Heavy, heavy banana taste. I mean, banana flavor. I've never had a beverage like this that had that strong banana flavor. The, the banana overpowers everything. There is a little bit of creaminess to it. I'm not tasting waffle cone. I'm not tasting chocolate. Many you guys are familiar with Choco Taco. If I'm not mistaken, didn't they discontinue Choco Taco like last year? They, they decided they were going to stop making it or they were going to stop making it and they brought it back. This has a familiar taste. Almost like... Almost like pineapple it almost has like a pineapple taste to it which is kind of weird and you definitely get the banana it's a thick creamy kind of texture yes they did discontinue it janice i thought they were i thought they brought it back or so i oh, making a comeback this summer okay that's what it was so you're both correct janice is correct they discontinued it julie's correct they're making a comeback this summer so I know I read something about about they had discontinued, and I th I thought I saw something by popular demand they were going to bring it back. So 
that poor keyboard. No, we didn't spill. I spilled it on me, not on the keyboard. <clears throat> I think, um, Ice Hand, I think you were right. Giving it a stir, I think, probably helps. This is really weird. Now, I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just really weird. This is an adult beverage. It is, uh, let's see, uh, 5.3 ABV, which is standard for a beer. And it's called a sour ale, but it's not like overly sour. It's not like, you know, like like puckering sour. It's so weird, though. Definitely get the banana. I don't know what to make of this. I mean, I really don't know what to make of this. This is just really odd. Usually... It, I mean, something like this that looks like a beer, it's from a brewery, right? It's an ale. You think it's going to be cold and refreshing, right? Something you would drink on a hot summer day. This doesn't really qualify like that. This is this is like something you would have for dessert. There's really something you would have for dessert is this. Um, it kind of defies logic. I, I, I got it at a liquor store, just a, like a one-off mom-and-pop liquor store. And I went in there and I was looking around. They have, they're pretty well stocked, but the problem with most liquor stores is that they'll, they'll sell you six packs and four packs and stuff of, er, of everything, but very, very few of them uh, will, will sell you singles. So like if you go to, like if I go to the, um, if I go to the Bev, the uh, Total Wine and More in Pasadena, they will sell you singles. So anything that's on their shelf anywhere, they go, hey, if you want one, pull one out and we'll sell you a single one. Um, but even other... Total Wine and Moors won't do that. So they said, no, no, we, we only have like whatever's here in this one little rack here, whatever's here, the only singles that they have. And BevMo does not do, they have a couple of things in it in, that are specific to being singles. Um, and they're mostly domestic beers and stuff like that. That's, you know, crap. But uh, very few people, very few places will uh, will do individual ones. So the liquor store that I went to, again, it was a mom and pop. And, I, and the guy says, can I help you with something? And I said, well, I, I do a live stream every week. And I try to do something unusual and everything. And I look for an adult beverage. Uh, I don't want to buy a six pack or anything because I want to try something unique and different. He goes, you want something unique and different? Try this. And he pointed to this. And I'm like, that looks really bizarre, but we're going to give this a shot. So we did uh, on his recommendations. All right. I guess I should rate this. I'm going to give that a big thumbs up. It is really weird. It is really odd. Um, it, uh, it has a lot of flavor. The banana is off the charts. Um, the banana flavoring that is off the charts. It's really bizarre. Um, I can see why they say smoothie style because it has that creaminess to it. It's, it's a really bizarre drink, uh, but it's also really tasty. It's really good. Um, I can't see like, I can't see drinking more than that. Like I, I, I I can't see like somewhere where you say like give me another one of those. I just I just can't see it. It's only five point. What did I say? Five point. It's only five point three ABV, but still, it's not something that you would like be drinking a lot of and everything. But it's good. It's really good. It to me, I would say if you want a, a if you want to try a drink after dinner, just as sort of a dessert, that's your guy. That's your guy right there. I don't know how. Uh, available. This is again, 450 North Brewing Company is from uh, Columbus, Indiana. So I think, um, you know, any place that has like specialty beers and stuff and everything may have this. I've never seen this before. So the guy pointed it out. And thank you, Guy, who pointed it out because uh, it's uh, very well done. So let's go ahead and read our card, uh, or read the answer to our card. So the question was, Guaiquan is a dish that originated in which country? And the guesses were, let's see, uh, Julie said Vietnam, Janice said Vietnam. Uh, looks like that's it. Looks like you're the only two that answered that. You said Vietnam. It is, in fact, Vietnam. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know that Guai Con or Summer Rollers features meat, prawns, and rice wrapped in rice paper? Oh, that's what it is? If I had said Summer Rolls... Well, that would have been easier, but <clears throat> it is, in fact, from Vietnam, and it is a uh, summer roll. So there we go. All right. Let's put that in the back and move on to a snack. Val, would you eat stinging nettle, which is edible? Well, 
You just answered your own question. If it's edible, I would eat it. If it's not edible, I would not eat it. Stinging nettle. Um, is, I wonder if that's the same as um, thistle. I was, is, is stinging nettle the same thing as thistle? Can somebody answer that? Janice can answer that. I know she can. Is stinging nettle is the same as thistle. The, the thing about uh, thistle is you've probably seen thistle because uh, most of the time it grows wild. Has a very be beautiful flower on it, but it is the whole plant is covered with spikes, spines. And the irony is that artichokes are a member of the thistle family. So if you've ever seen a, like an, an artichoke, when they let it go and they let it bloom, beautiful flower, beautiful like purple flower on it, everything. But it is actually a member of the thistle family. So uh, banana choc choco taco slushy XXL sounds like the beverage of choice to match with goop melange. It does. It really does. Oh, we are going to have to do. I don't know if we should do that. Like, maybe we should do a live stream where I actually make real goop melange. Um, so I, I'm debating right now. I know I want to do it as an episode, and I'm trying to get in touch with Paramount because Paramount out, Paramount owns the rights to the Odd Couple, the Odd Couple TV show from the '70s. Um, they own the rights to the Odd Couple TV show, and I want to be able to use part of that. So I think I'm trying to get in touch with Paramount to get permission to use that. Last thing I want to do is to put part of, you know, put to put that in a video and then have Paramount say, take it down. We own the rights to that. So there we go. Donna Lauderdale has entered the room. Welcome, Donna. I have not seen you in a while. Welcome back. Always good to see you. Tastes like spinach. Which tastes like spinach? Not this. This didn't taste like spinach. You're talking about those... Um, Summer rolls that taste like spinach? Not sure. All right. So let's uh, read another card and let's go into our snacks. We got some odd stuff today. I'm thinking of crafting crap. Yeah. That's only 5.6, 5.3. Uh, I'm thinking of cracking open a beer. Which beer are you thinking of cracking open, Jared? All right. The question is boat. Oh, come on. Seriously? All right. I'll, I'll ask it. I have it in my hand. I'll ask it. Boba is another name for a witch popular beverage. All right, that goes there. That's a giveaway. And let's reach into our bag of tricks. Let's see. Let's try to get something that's not spicy. And then I'll start with the sweet stuff. This one is bizarre. I think we're going to start with this. There, so you can look at it a little bit. This is... Uh, it's from Bimbo, not Bimbo, Bimbo. Um, and Bimbo is kind of like they took uh, Bambi and Dumbo. They took the names of this because that's when the, the, the company formed, the company Bimbo formed. Um, it was in the 1940s. And uh, Dumbo, the movie, the Disney animated movie Dumbo and the Disney animated movie Bambi were both popular at the same time. So they just kind of made a portmanteau of the name. Um, the Bambi and Dumbo and put them together and it was Bimbo, right? Uh, Bimbo is, uh, it turns out that Bimbo is also a, a term in other countries. It's an affectionate term. Um, in the United States, it is not so much an, an affectionate term as an insult to uh, certain women. So something was hissing in it. Not like a snake, but like a hose or something. And I'm thinking, I'm looking around the room going like, do I have something that should be hissing? And the answer is no. Okay, so um, this is from Bimbo. Uh, Bimbo was founded uh, in 1945 by Lorenzo Sendra, Jose Mata, Jaime Gurmao, Jaime Sendra, and Alfonso Velasco in Mexico City. And they started out by selling cellophane-wrapped large and small Lo white loaf bread so loaves of bread that's what they, that was their thing and then over over a period of time they started diversifying and they have all kinds of like bakery products uh, and bakery snacks and things like that so this one i thought was really really interesting this is um uh, rebanadas sweet toast or pan dulce tostado uh to me it looks like toast like white bread toast with something sweet inside Let's see if I, if I can make out the ingredients in here. Sugar, wheat flour, um, vegetable shortening, palm oil. Um, I mean, nothing, nothing really, you know, weird. Salt, 
canola oil, potassium chloride, um, contains wheat, soy, uh, what is that, made in a bakery that also use milk. So there's no milk in here. Now I'm seeing that that looks like something made with milk, but apparently not. So let's give this a shot and see what this is all about. Rebanadas are good cream cheese toast. Cream cheese toast. Okay. Well, it's like a little sandwich. I mean, it's actually bread. You know, it's actually like toasted bread. But it doesn't look like toast toast. I mean, it looks like it looks like maybe something was made in an oven or something, right? It doesn't look like something was made in a toaster. It looks like a baked good. This also looks like something that is going to break apart into little pieces when I go to eat it. Now, here's the thing. Ooh, that has a weird smell. Ah, oh, that has a weird smell. I don't think there's any cheese in here. So, like, I, I know, Miguel, you said cream cheese, but there's no, I don't think there's cheese in here because it says, made, oh, look at that. Maybe you can't see that. That beer where it spilled on, on, on me here um, left, a, left a weird stain in my shirt. That's kind of weird. All right. Um, I guess we'll just try to break a piece of this off. I have a feeling it's going to shatter and go all over the place, but we're going to give it a try. Oh, there we go. All right, let's see. Well, it's definitely toast. Really dry toast. And it's like a sugary filling. It almost tastes like like Oreo filling. It does, Julie. It has an odd sweetness to it. It also tastes familiar. It's very sugary. You know, it tastes like cake frosting. I think there's lard in it. Smell the filling. When I first opened that picture, picture. When I first opened the package, it had an unusual smell, but I think that dissipated, and so afterwards, it really doesn't have that unusual smell. So, kind of weird, Miguel. Um. It's different. It's odd. Um, I think I'm going to give it a, a thumbs up, trending downward. Um, it's very sweet. It doesn't taste like 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 you said, cream cheese on toast. That sounds really good, um, but this doesn't taste like cream cheese. It, like I said, it, it almost tastes like the filling of uh, Oreo filling. So it's kind of weird. You know, so it's like an Oreo filling on toast. And I don't know. Um, it's probably what it is. It's probably just like Oreo filling on toast, uh, only because again, there's no milk in there. There's no you know milk products in there. <clears throat> so it's probably it, and there's no milk products in uh, in uh, Oreos as well. So uh, it's uh, I think it's the, their frosting is uh, sugar and uh, vegetable oil and something else. Now, they used to use lard, but they don't use lard anymore. So um, I don't know. They're good with coffee. I imagine they would be. Um, but to be honest with you, Miguel, I think if I made toast and put cream cheese on it, I think I might enjoy it a little bit more than this. Uh, these are also not stale per se, because stale bread has a tendency to get less crunchy, you know, unless you're going to make breadcrumbs, you know, that, that kind of stale. Um, uh, it, there is some crunch to that. But um, honestly, um, I think I would rather have them like freshly made or something. This one is kind of like, just okay. So uh, not not terrible, uh, a little bit unusual and different, and that's why it doesn't get such a, a low rating, but still, I think, think thumbs up, uh, trending downward. So speaking of Mexican bakery, I went to our friends at Tex-Mex New Place and got pan dulces, really good stuff. They usually are. Uh, do they make them locally, Jules, or are they getting those from Mexico as well? I'm trying to remember if we did. Did I put out any of the videos that we did from uh, from there? Do you, and, and 
give them a plug. Uh, what, what? Remember the name of the place? Give them a plug. Yeah, they make them in house. Oh, okay. Uh, so give them a plug, Jules, because I don't remember the name of the place. <clears throat> hey, Scott is in the room. Welcome, Scott. Uh, I'm doing better. I'm not doing, you know, completely better, as you can tell in my voice. But uh, but you know, I can't complain. They won't let me. Tex-Mex Mini Mart in Tingsboro, Massachusetts. Thank you, Jules. So if you, those of you in Massachusetts that are near Tingsboro, definitely check this place out. They uh, they import things from Mexico. So the uh, woman that owns the place, she goes to Mexico on a regular basis and brings a bunch of stuff back. So they have unusual things from Mexico that are really hard to get, especially in Massachusetts. So uh, definitely recommend it. And Tex-Mex Bakery in Nashua, New Hampshire. There we go. Met the owner. Oh, cool. You could do an interview for for trippy food, Jules. We'll do a separate. We'll do an episode if you want to. If you want to do an interview, that would be cool. Um, the question was: Boba is another name for which popular beverage? Uh, let's see. Jenna says milk tea. Uh, Donna, Donna says tea. Uh, Tom says liquid earthworms. Those look like the only answers. It is in fact bubble tea. Did you know that bubble tea originated in Taiwan in the 1980s? Did you know that? I mean, honestly, did you know that? That originated in Taiwan in the 1980s? Seems like something that had been around for a long time, but it's not. This is addictive. It's just so weird. And I and I like weird. I like weird. All right. So let's read another card and go on to our next snack. How are we doing on time? We're doing great on time. And the question is approximately how many millions of gallons? All right, so this is just throwing out a number, I guess. It's a guess. Approximately how many millions of gallons of maple syrup did Canada produce in 2018? So um, they give a point something. Um, I'll just take the whole number, and you don't have to round up or down. Just if you, you get the first, the first number, uh, single digit, First number, how, approximately how many millions of gallons of maple syrup did Canada produce in 2018? Uh, just the first, the first number. So you know, obviously, it's something between zero and nine. Let's put it that way. You have you have a one in nine chance. There's a one in ten chance. One in ten chance of getting it right. All right, let's see. Um, again, I want to stick with the less, you know, powerful stuff first. Let's do these, because these scare the hell out of me. All right, read the question. These are, eat the change. Eat the change is the company. I guess like that's keep, let's like keep the change. Eat the change was founded in 2021 by Seth Goldman and Spike Mendelson in Bethesda, Maryland. These are carrot chews. The reason that these frighten me is because I'm not a big fan of carrots. But for some bizarre reason, these are maple and cardamom flavored carrot chews. You know, we're we're trippy food, and this is trippy, so you know. Oh, they wouldn't notch this, would they? Yeah, good question, Jules. Good question. What the heck are these? I have no idea. But they are maple and cardamom carrot chews. Took your advice and went to a seafood restaurant when I visited Seattle and went to the crab pot, got clam chowder and seafood broil. It was amazing. Good, Scott. Awesome. That's what they smell like carrots. That's not a good thing. You can see that. They look like beets, I think. They can't be beet. No, they look like raisins now. Look at that. Looks like a raisin. It's a carrot chew. Uh, let's see. What is in them? Ingredients. Organic carrots. Organic apple juice concentrate. Organic citric acid. Because there's citric acid in everything. Uh, organic natural flavors. That's it. That's the only thing in it. Not really strong maple flavor. The 
there is a carrot flavor. I'm getting the cardamom. I'm getting the smell of carrots though. This bag with this bag open, the smell of carrots. I never thought about the smell of carrots, but when I get the whiff of that, it definitely smells like carrots. I, mean, I have that, it's like a tanginess to them that carrots typically don't have, which I'm sure is from the apple juice. It's a little odd. They're sweet, but they're not too sweet. They do have a carrot flavor, but, and, I, and again, generally I don't like that carrot flavor. But these are, it's not like over the top. And I think the cardamom helps. The maple is subtle, so it adds a sweetness to it, but that's it. But I think carrots are naturally sweet anyways. Um, they're really unusual. They're not horrible, like, like carrots usually are for me. Um, I'm going to give them a thumbs up. Those are actually pretty good. I don't know that I can eat a lot of these. These, the, they're, they're like, these look like, the, or these taste like something that would satisfy a sweet tooth. But... Um, just like if you just wanted to have something sweet to have in your mouth, just really, really quick and everything, and you know, like one or two of those, and I think any more than that would be like overkill. So um, really weird smell though, but still going to get a thumbs up from me. All right. So the question was approximately how many millions of gallons of maple syrup did Canada produce in 2018? Uh, Julie said seven. Janice Yamanaka said nine. Those look like the only answers. Uh, Janice is correct. It is 9.8, which is almost 10, but it's uh, 9.8. I, I said I would just take the first number. 9.8. Did you know? Did you know that as of 2019, Canada produces approximately 70% of the world's pure maple syrup? Now, my question is, who produces the other 30%? They don't tell you. All right. <clears throat> that goes back in the box. Uh, Isan says, Doodle must sense you don't have a good treat for him since he has not made a begging appearance. Uh, the reason that he has not made a begging appearance is because uh, Claudia is doing art in the other room. And um, and so her muse for doing art is music. And I can't have copyrighted music on here, so I had to close the door. So I, I told Claudia when she was done um, to open the door and let Doodle come in. So we will probably see Doodle in a little bit. That's crazy. No, that's trippy. All right. Let's ask another question. How many snacks did we do? We did two. We did two. All right. Just trying to keep track. Two snacks, before snacks, and then our soft drink. The question is, uh, I, I, another easy one, I think. The brewery for which beer is located at St. James Gate in Dublin? Again, the question, the brewery for which beer is located at St. James Gate in Dublin? That goes over there. Let's pick another snack. Let's see. Uh, that looks spicy. That looks spicy. That looks not so spicy. Oh, yeah, let's do this one. Let's get the really weird, bizarre stuff out of the way. These. Let's see. Uh, those are uh, Nutrition Works is the product line. Nutrition Works Beet Gummies. They are from Windmill Health Products. And Windmill Health Products was founded in Chicago, Illinois, by two pharmacists. I don't say who they are, but it was, I think, because they founded the company and then the company was purchased by somebody else. So, they, you know, they have a tendency not to mention the people who, who uh, founded the company. Uh, it was founded in Chicago, Illinois, by two pharmacists in 1972, Windmill Health Products. And so, supposedly, everything's good. But there, it's one of those, if you go to their website, they, one of those things that has the disclaimer, it goes, it doesn't, you know, this does not, signify that, you know, this is blah, 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 blah whatever. And so it's, uh, I'm just eating it at face value. Let's put it that way. So these are beet gummies. Now, it does tell you that there are 30 gummies in here and there are 15 servings and that it is a dietary supplement. So that kind of tells me eat two, right? 30 gummies, 15 servings, that's two. Two of these is a serving. And I don't want to, you know, I don't want to make the assumption that there's stuff in here that you have to be careful of and everything, but if they're telling you that a serving is only two of these, um, there's probably a good reason for it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to try one, and then we're going to save one for the end for our group melange. So, but there are, let's see, uh, directions as a dietary supplement, take two gummies daily or as directed by your healthcare professional. That sounds weird. Uh, let's see, other ingredients. 
other ingredients? Oh, okay, the, the ingredients is beet powder, 500 milligrams of beet powder, and one milligram of black cherry. That's bizarre. Other ingredients, glucose syrup, sugar, and those are both sugars, water, pectin. Uh, pectin is like a jelly. They use it for like uh, <clears throat> jelly candies and stuff like that. Uh, pectin uh, is usually made from fruit. Uh, sodium citrate, citric acid, because there's citric acid in everything. A natural flavor and natural color. Keep out of the reach of children. Store in a cool, dry place. Uh, protect from heat, light, and moisture. Do not use if seal is broken. It sounds scary, but there's nothing in here. I see nothing in here that sounds like you could OD on something, right? It's just really, really weird. Uh, I don't get this. I'm saying uh, direct it as your healthcare professional. Take two daily. Um, but I'm not really seeing any of the ingredients. It looks like anything medicinal. So I don't know. It's really weird. But I'm going to follow their instructions and, you know, do a maximum of two today. We'll find out. I mean, like, I might try this and it might taste like crap. Maybe that you'd only want to do two a day. That was very strange. It restarted the live for me to the beginning. That is strange. Val, how about maggot salad? Um, well, John, I would say there's a couple of ways I would do that. So you could you could use roasted maggots as like croutons. The substitute is a crouton, something crunchy to put on top of the salad. Uh, I mean, as far as the salad itself goes, salad it, salad ass assumes that, well, I was going to say it um, assumes that you're you're doing something with green and leafy. That's not necessarily true because potato salad does not necessarily have that. So, you know, maybe you could be talking about, or like tuna salad. So you're talking about like mixing with um, mayonnaise, maybe pickles, something like that, or, or a relish, something like that. Um, like, just like that, I don't, you know, and and, and making making a sandwich out of it, maybe. But I think a maggot in, maggots in a salad, like as something crunchy that you would put on top of the salad, that could work, I think. Beet powder sounds like one of the ingredients and a good whooping. <laughs> Beet powder. Either that or it sounds like something that like a band would, would take before they start uh, doing a gig. Hey, man, we need some more of that beet powder. We played really well last night, remember? Yeah, but Dizzy's still in the hospital. What is with this? And now I try to open this. Here we go. Let's find out why they only recommend you have two of these. For well, let's find out how to open the stupid thing. Maybe that's why they only tell you to take two, because by the time you get this open, you're not hungry anymore. Oh, there we go. All right. That's weird. It smells like a fruit roll-up. It looks like a gumdrop or like uh, dots, right? Looks like dots. All right, let's try that. The texture of dots. I don't know if it tastes like beets. It tastes like apple juice. Maybe that's the pectin. Sodium citrate. It probably comes from cit citric, not citric acid, but comes from citrus fruit. Well, that's kind of weird. It doesn't really have a, a, a beet flavor per se. Uh, it is tart, a little bit tart. Oh, well, because of the black cherry, that's why it's tart. <clears throat> it, it is tart. Um, and it tastes like candy. Oh, it's kind of a weird thing. They make a big deal out of it, like it's in a dietary supplement and everything. It's just kind of a weird thing. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting more cherry than beet as far as like, there's a beet aftertaste and everything. No red tongue. And kind of weird. I'm gonna give that a thumbs up, trending downward. I appreciate the odd, the oddness of it, but it doesn't taste like beets, which I think it should have a really beet, strong beet taste. It tastes more like cherry, uh, like black cherry, than it does uh, beets. 
Um, and it tastes like a gumdrop or like a, a dot or something like that. So uh, yeah, thumbs up, trending downward, I think, on that one. Beet powders, and I was like, oh, okay. Wikipedia says that the red color is not broken down into the body and may cause urine and stool to assume a reddish color, which can make it look bloody. Uh, you're just now realizing this, Janice? I, don't, I can't tell you how many times, like I've had beets, like, you know, like the canned beets, red beets in a salad, and then later on gone to the bathroom and, and been scared for a second and go like, oh my God, what, you know, what happened? And then just remember, oh yeah, I had beets. So um, maybe that's just your nice way of saying that. Um, as opposed to, you know, sharing an actual story and everything. But uh, but yes, you're absolutely correct. It does not break down in the body and it passes through you in that color. Uh, other things like that, um, like if you eat a lot of black licorice, um, it comes out as kind of a greenish color. And that kind of comes out too. So black the, the black licorice, uh, that color goes through you as well. Um, I'm trying to think of like what else. There's probably some other foods like that too, where that kind of color comes out and you're like questioning yourself like, Am I okay? Am I going to die? What did I eat? Um, so, yeah, you're absolutely right. Texture of dots, so ripping your fillings out. And not as bad, Jules. Not as bad. More like a, a, maybe the texture of a gummy bear. It's, it doesn't have that stickiness of dots. Um, so it's more like a, gum, like, a, like a firm gummy bear texture, something like that. It's Haley. It is Haley because it says Haley. So I knew it was Haley. Welcome, Haley. Glad you could make it. Uh, you can also use beets to dye your hair. Yeah, you can use beets to dye a lot of things. I think they used to use beets to dye clothes and stuff. So, um, because that color, like, you get beet beet juice on something, like, forget it, you'll never get that color out. So, there we go. All right. Uh, so, let's see, how many snacks we did? We did three snacks, right? We did three snacks. Not including the dog treats. So, we'll, we'll do one more. Let's see. Um, that's spicy, that's spicy, that's... Spicy, that's maybe not spicy. Let's do this one because I think it's going to be fun. All right, so to answer the question, the brewery, brewery for which beer is located at St. James Gate in Dublin? <clears throat> Let's see, the guesses were Ice Hand said Guinness, Janice said Guinness. Those are the only guesses. Uh, it was, in fact, Guinness. Did you know in, in 1759, Arthur Guinness signed a 9,000 year lease with St. James Brewery? 9,000. So you can enjoy Guinness for another 9,000 or 8,000. You know, that's, well, almost 8,000 years. A little 8,000 8, and some change. 1759 would be how many years ago? Would be uh, 1819, like 200 and 265. 265 years ago. So, you know, 265. Uh, 9,000 minus 265, 8,000 8, 8, something. So for another 8,000 something years, you'll be able to enjoy Guinness uh, from, made from St. John's Brewery. All right, let's stick that in there. Read another card and we'll get into our, our next snack. Time-wise, we're doing great. We're at the top of the hour. We're going to do our snack and we're going to get into our soft drink. Let me ask you a question uh, because it looks like I'm asking the questions and you know, like maybe we get two answers and everything. Are you guys still cool with the questions? You still like the questions? Even if you're not, don't necessarily have to answer them, but it, are, you, are you still cool with the questions? The other thing is I'm looking at, I keep forgetting it's, I got to go this, I got to go this way. I'm looking at the number that says six. So we keep, we, it seems like we're, we're dwindling. We're losing people. We only have like, six, now it's down to five. There are five people. I don't know if that means there's five people in the chat, there's five people watching, there's five people who are subscribers that are watching, there might be more than that, I honestly don't know. But there's only five people. And we're halfway in, and there's five people. That's not a good trend. So, um, you know, I'm, I just hope that you guys are enjoying this, that this is worthwhile to, to keep on doing it. But the number is going down, I just have to be concerned about that. But, uh, but you know, if even if I have two people watching, you guys are still important. This is still fun. I still want to do it, but um, but just concerned about that. That's all, and wondering how can I get, how can I get that number higher? What can I do to get that number higher without doing a um, without doing a human sacrifice? Of course, uh, I'm not going to do that. At least not me. Uh, if you eat a huge amount of carrots, the carotene in them can start giving your skin an orange color. I did hear about that. Um, so maybe it's the same thing with beets. Maybe if you eat too many beets eventually you'll have that red color in your skin. I don't know. I do not know that. Questions, yes. All right, Ice Hand, we'll continue to do the questions. 
maybe a glitch. Maybe, but it's still, like I said, that number is six. That number is usually like you know 10 or higher. Um, and that number is only that number is only six. So just concerned about that. Maybe they're waiting for Doodle. How will they know Doodle's here? It's not like they'll get a notification saying, oh, Doodle has entered the room. Um, yeah, so I don't know. But, and then if they're waiting for Doodle, they haven't waited long enough. They already left. Because I think we started out with like 11 or something like that. The question, it, I mean, these questions, they seem like they're getting easier. Pho is a traditional soup from which country? Again, pho is a traditional soup from which country? I'm just going to read them. No matter how easy they are, I'm just going to read them. All right, <clears throat> let's get into this. So this is Swift brand, our Swift product line. The product line is Swift corned beef. Now, I will say that there used to be a, a product line or actually a company called Swift uh, that made, made uh, bacon and sausages and things like that. I don't know if they're around anymore. Uh, th their specialty was like sausages and bacon and everything. Uh, I, I think they're just using the name. I don't think that this is... I don't think it's the same company that was doing Swift because I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, that Swift was a company that was located in Fort Worth, Texas, and they were getting you know all the meats and stuff from the um, what do you call that place in, in Fort Worth where the li livestock exchange or whatever. Um, but this does not see, appear to be part of that. So this Swift product line is from a company called Sampco. S A M P C O which is an acronym for South American Meat Products Company. It was founded in 1963 by George Zaslaw in Chicago, Illinois. And this is a product of Brazil. So this is corned beef with natural juices, product of Brazil, ready to eat. Um, beef raised with no added hormones, no MSG, gluten-free. It says serving suggestion, but that picture is so tiny, I can't tell what that is. It looks like, it looks like they put that on that that uh, toast thing that we ate. Um, let's see, ingredients. Beef, beef broth, salt, sugar, sodium nitrate. I don't know why they put sugar in it, but that's okay. So um, here's the thing that I love about this. Uh, if you, any of you oldsters like me, Tom, you might remember this. Uh, Spam used to have one of these, which is the key, right? that little key. On it, right? Span used to have that on it. So you have to twist that all the way around and it opens the can. So this still has that on it, whereas most things are now, uh, you know, pop top. I think even all Spam now is all pop top. Um, have you start? Have you not started the do line valve doodle early warning system? <laughs> let me let me see whether the, the doodle alarm system is. Let me activate that. There we go. So hopefully that'll open. So again, the way this works is you turn the key. Well, actually, I, you, you can't do it this way. So what you have to do is you have to take the key out. And you put the key this way, right, on the bottom. So that this, the part, this part sticks at the bottom. And then you just twist. I'm going to do it this way just in case there's fluid in there. And you just go all the way around the can. And again, uh, hands. Uh, show me a hand. Show me. Just say I remember. If you remember when spam used to be like this, we used to have to use the key to open up spam. Probably, I would say probably back in the old days, yeah, you, you had to do that with like sardines, um, not canned goods like tomatoes or anything like, or you know, vegetables and everything. Not so much, but stuff like packed meats. I think that they were all like that. So there we go. Got that off with the key. Let me save that because that's kind of a cool thing from yesteryear, I think. I think I'm going to save that. Dark Draconis is it? It's Doodle the Prince of Darkness. It is Doodle the Prince of Darkness. Hi, Doodle. Come up and say hi to everybody. Come and say hi. You going to say hi? Huh? You going to say hi? You're all excited. You want a snack, huh? You want a snack. Doodle the Prince of Darkness, everybody. Doodle had his first puppuccino today. If you guys don't know what a puppuccino is, for some reason, if you go into a Starbucks and ask for a puppuccino, they will give you a cup about that big with whipped cream in it. And it's a pup, they, they call that a puppuccino. And the dogs love it. Doodle just like wolfed it down because he's part wolf, you know, many, many, many generations ago. 
Doodle, I this is what I have for you. You know what? I, I have these dog treats, but I also have these, which are good for your breath and good for your teeth. So I'm going to give you one of these. All right. So you enjoy that. He's gone. He'll be back, I'm sure. Yeah, that's it. Uh, that's that's. I, Doodle will be back. We will see Doodle again, I'm sure. Um, I did say uh, hello to Dark Draconis, did I not? And AG1. Does that mean you're two people, or does that mean that your name is Dr Dark Draconis and AG1 is your is your full name? I'm not sure, but welcome. Uh, military brat, so I saw a lot of canned yum-yums. Uh, that was the first spam I ever saw with a key. Yeah, uh, um, like I said, I'm old, so when I was a kid, that's how you got spam. You got spam with that little key there, so... I'm having a hard time getting that thing out, but I, I'll I'll deal with that later. I'm not going to waste time today dealing with that. So, bada boom, bada bing, bada fuga. Do I want to open it this way or this way? Wait, wait. It says ready to eat. Now, so you see that white stuff in there? That might be a little bit scary, but that's just congealed fat. That's all that is. You can, you can see that in there, right? But it says ready to eat, so we're just going to eat it. I have, I did not bring in a cutting board. I didn't bring in a cutting board. So I'm going to have to do it on this. And I'm just going to cut a slice of this off. And we're going to try that. A thin slice of that. I suppose you could use this in a sandwich. This does not look like corned beef. I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry. I don't know why I said that. I'm not sorry. But it smells like corned beef. Well, it smells like canned corned beef. I imagine, or what you imagine canned corned beef would smell like. All right, here we go. I bet this is better heated up. I'm not going to brulee at them. Hmm. It has the texture of ham salad and the flavor of corned beef hash. It doesn't taste like corned beef. It doesn't taste like, you know, like corned beef you would put in a sandwich or anything. It doesn't taste like that. It doesn't have that texture. It's more like, it almost tastes like corned beef hash. Now, because there's fat in here, those little pieces of fat in here, I think maybe this is better heated up because then they, that, that kind of, you know, it doesn't have the same texture heated up. And I suppose you could spread it on a sandwich instead of actually, you know, putting corned beef on a sandwich and everything. It's a little bit odd. I'm sure like I've had something like this before. I just don't remember. Um, it's 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 ready to eat, but I, I don't I don't recommend that right out of the can like that. I mean, you get the flavor of what it tastes like and everything, but it, it doesn't seem like that's really the way to go. As far as eating it, it seems like you would use it to make something. Like maybe you make the equivalent of a ham salad using that. That would probably be really good. You know, like a little mayo and some uh, relish and stuff like that would probably be really good. Um, maybe like um, stuff it in some peppers and, and, and put them in the oven. Uh, or, you know, microwave if you want to do it the short way and everything. So I think, I think. This would be really good to use as an ingredient in something, maybe using it as, to stuff in something or mix with something, like mix with potatoes or something, maybe make corned beef hash with this and everything. Uh, the flavor is pretty good. Um, the texture is, like, like I said, is a little bit odd. It doesn't really lend itself for just slicing it and eating it like that. So um, I'm going to give it a thumbs up trending downward. It's not bad. It just just doesn't really seem like that's the kind of thing that you want to eat just like that. Did you finish that already? Huh? You want some of the corned beef. You know what? You might actually be able to have that. What did I say with the ingredients on that? I said, let's see, is there anything in the ingredients that you can't have? I don't think so. I don't think there's anything you can, can't have. And there's a little bit of sugar in there, but that's not going to hurt you any. I can give you a little bit of corned beef hash. I'm going to do that, doodle. This is your lucky day. You get to have like a real snack here. So, yeah, I know you smell that, right? You can smell that. 
I'm just going to give you a little piece of that, right? Okay, Doodle. I'm just going to give you a little piece of that. There you go. <clears throat> that's that's a do nice doodle size piece. I don't want you to get sick. But like I said, I didn't see anything in here that you can't have. So here we go. Little doodle size piece. There you go, doodle. I just realized that I put it on that plate. He's going to lick that off that plate, and I still have to use that plate to put stuff on. So maybe not the smartest thing I've ever done. Let's go back to our question. Our question was, pho is a traditional soup from which country? I'm sure everybody got this right. Let's see. Uh, Janice said Vietnam. Uh, Janice was the only one that answered that. That's, that's it. Just Janice answered that. And Janice, you are correct. It is Vietnam. Did you know it is believed that the name of this dish originated from the French word for fire? Yes, that makes perfect sense because the French were very uh, present in Vietnam, uh, especially in the latter half of the 20th century. 20th century? 20th century, yeah. Um, so uh, they shouldn't have been, but they were. All right, Doodle. No, no, that's that's it. That's it, Doodle. I don't want to go crazy with that because, you know, I don't know, I don't know what effect that's going to have on you. So that's going to be it. Doodle, the Prince of Darkness, everybody. Yeah, you're welcome to stay, Doodle. Just let's not get crazy. Hey, John is here from Distilled, Brewed, and Reviewed. Welcome, John. Good to see you. I, well, I don't see where you snuck in, but I see everybody saying hi to you. So I, where did you come in? Oh, there you are. Okay. Uh, welcome, John. Good to have you here. Cheers. John, have you, I'm going to ask you, John, because you're, you're the king of, of uh, beverages, at least uh, coffees and um, alcoholic beverages, and I think beers. Let me think beers. John, have you ever had this? Again, this is um, 405 North Brewing Company Banana Choco Taco Slushy XXL. And it is a smoothie style sour ale with banana fudge, waffle cone, vanilla ice cream, and milk chocolate. Have you had have you had this, John? Have you had this one? Or have you even reviewed this one? I found this one kind of accidentally. I just asked for a recommendation at the liquor store and they told me about that. Um, it is a very bizarre and odd thing, but uh, just didn't know, uh, John, if you've had that before. So have you had that before? <clears throat> All right, let's put the card back. Uh, let's see, that was four snacks, right? That was four snacks, correct. All right, so we are now going to do our soft drink. So we'll put that up there so you guys can check that out. And I'll go ahead and read a card. And the question is, Russia and Iran are both major producers of which delicacy? Again, Ru Russia and Iran are both major producers of which delicacy? Let's put that there. So the spe the story behind this is, this is liquid death. You guys have seen us do episodes on, uh, the regular episodes in shorts, uh, doing liquid death, and it's doing liquid death seltzer. I think a long, long time ago, we did a can of liquid death when it was just the water. We did it on a live stream, and it was like, it's a, it's a can of water. You know, nothing to write home about it, a can of water. Uh, supposedly, it's mountain water that comes from the Alps, supposedly, but... It just tasted like a can of water, expensive water. Uh, so we have done some episodes uh, where we did several of the liquid deaths, and we did um, uh, some shorts where we did like individual ones. This one's a little bit different. So this one, the reason that I chose this is because uh, Matt, Matt Zion from Reckless Eating, had, had told me about it was because he saw one of the liquid death, I think it was one of the shorts, the liquid death shorts, and just mentioned this and said, it's off the charts good. So that's so I thought I would try that because I have not tried that yet. So this is Liquid Death Armless Palmer Iced Tea and Lemonade. Now my understanding is that that they got sued by Arnold Palmer for using that name because uh, as you may or may not know, an Arnold Palmer, as far as a drink goes, an Arnold Palmer is uh, half iced tea, half lemonade. Uh, this does have lemons in it. Um, and so I think they got sued and they could not, could no longer use the name Armless Palmer and they were going to go with another name. I would tell you that I just bought this and it's called Armless Palmer. It does not have another name. So I don't, I don't know if that was a, a temporary lawsuit. I don't know if it was a new lawsuit and they just hadn't got around to changing the name on all the cans because they were supposed to change it to something else. Um, this actually, for some bizarre reason, has, no, no, I, I was going to say, for some bizarre reason, has 30 milligrams of caffeine in it. That reason is that there's tea in it, right? So tea has caffeine in it, so there's 30 milligrams of caffeine. Makes sense. 
Uh, the water is canned by Wilderness Asset Holdings in Virginia, uh, and the, the water is supposedly from Starzinger in the upper Austrian town of Frankenmarket. Not like Frankenstein, Frankenmarket, which is a, a market that's just kind of put together using spare parts. <clears throat> and um, Liquid Death Mountain Water was founded by Mike Cesario in 2017 in Los Angeles, California, where you would think mountain water would come from, Los Angeles, California. All right, Doodle, I got to open my I got to open my water. So you're going to kind of chill here for a second, OK? Uh, I have not had uh, dark. I'm going to just call you dark for short because there's nobody else in the chat named dark. So we'll just call you dark for short. Um, I have I've had the mango chainsaw, uh, which was really, really good. And I think that's the one that Matt saw. And he hadn't had the mango chainsaw, but that's the one he saw where he mentioned the iced tea was really good. Um, I've not had the iced tea. Do they have more than one iced tea? This is the only one that I know of. Because uh, this is the one that Matt was talking about. It's the only one I know. Of. Uh, wait, no, it's peach. Uh, it's, it's a peach tea. Okay, yeah, I think this is the one that Matt was talking about. Was really good. Uh, you reviewed this liquid death, this particular one, Janice. Was it this one? All right, so we're gonna try this doodle. That's not that's not for you. That has sugar and everything else in it, right? That was not for you. All right, liquid death, armless palmer, iced tea with agave and vitamins. Oh, uh, let's see. Um, this psychotic can of iced tea will use agave and B vitamins to savagely murder your thirst and turn its insides into balloon animals to book gigs at children's birthday parties. They have a sense of humor, that's for certain. Uh, ingredients, water, cane nectar, um, black tea, lemon juice, concentrate, citric acid, because there's citric acid in everything. Uh, natural flavor, lemon, um, pyro, yes, uh, which is vitamin B6 and vitamin B12. Manufactured for liquid death, mountain water, Los Angeles, California. Death to plastics. We donate a portion of the profits from every can sold to help kill plastic pollution. All right. Murder your thirst. We are an accessory to murder now. I'm going to shake it up a little bit or kind of like that. Liquid Death Slaughterberry Iced Tea is good, too. Um, I did one of the berry ones, but it was a berry seltzer. It wasn't a, a berry iced tea. I didn't know they had more than one iced tea. Let's go ahead and try this. I'm just I'm going to pour it into a glass, A, because it makes it easier to drink, and B, I want to see what it looks like. It looks like iced tea. Has no smell. I like that. Um, they use the agave nectar to sweeten it, but they don't use a lot of it. So it's not like a. It's somewhere between those of, those of you from the south, and I don't know how many of you are from the south. You know what sweet tea is, and you know what unsweet tea is, right? This is somewhere in that <clears throat> middle area. Not quite sweet tea. Not quite unsweet tea. Somewhere in the middle ground of that. So, so like if you if you're put off by the sweetness of uh, some iced tea, that one's good. Um, but if you like to have some sweetness in there, that's probably halfway there. Nice tea flavor. Not too not too much tannins in there, which are kind of acidic. Um, but it does have that tea. It definitely has that tea flavor. It's probably not as strong as an as a regular Arnold Palmer. So you're not getting as much of that, you know, lemonade flavor as you do from a regular Arnold Palmer. It's somewhat light. Um, they do a lot of uh, they do a lot of carbonated beverages. This is not carbonated, so this is just straight up iced tea. That's really good. I don't like a sweet tea. I don't like um, tea with sugar, uh, iced tea with sugar in it. Um, usually, if I'm going to drink iced tea, I drink it unsweet uh, iced tea. But this one is not. It's not crazy. It's not. Uh, it doesn't go too, do too crazy like that. I'm going to go ahead and give that a thumbs up. That's like really good. It's really good. It's 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 light. It's not overly sweet and everything. Then that's going to get a thumbs up for me. So thank you, Matt Zion, for the uh, recommendation. Let's go back to our question. Here, Doodle, you know what? I'm going to give you one of these treats. I'm going to give you one of these. You know what it is? 
No, you just want to hang out. You just want to, I'm going to put it right here. And that way, if you want it, you can just grab that and eat that. All right. So our question was, Russia and Iran are both major producers of which delicacy? So the answers were, I see Julie saying salt, but I don't know if, uh, if she's saying that's the delicacy. No, because that's after Vietnam. All right. Uh, Ice Hand said caviar. Julie said caviar. Uh, Tom said caviar cigars. <laughs> uh, Tom, I, I think you're thinking of uh, <clears throat> uh, Dirk Gherkin. Dirk Gherkin, they do the caviar cigars. Uh, Janice Yamanaka says caviar. Everybody says caviar, and that's because it is, in fact, caviar. Did you know records of caviar can be dated back to 4th century BC? Now, I don't know what they mean, records of caviar. Like, in other words, uh, hey, I was playing these old records that I found, and this one was like, they all they do it was just talking about caviar. It was from the 4th century BC. You know, I don't know if they mean that or they mean that I saw documentation that said they're eating caviar. I don't know. Uh, but records date uh, of caviar can be dated back to 4th century BC. Maybe they just found like an old 4th century BC vial full of caviar. Who really knows? I don't. All right. I think we're all caught up here. Let's see how we're doing for time. 2.23. Got a half, hour to, half an hour to go. Four more snacks. I think we're doing okay. I think we're doing okay. I thought the record itself was made from caviar. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. They found the old record, and they were going to uh, – here, I'm going to put this over here, Drew. I'm going to put that over there, and that way I can get to my bit. Oh, all right, fine. Just take it and leave. See if I care. All right, so we're back to our snacks again. Let's read another question. Again, I think this one is uh, – maybe not, maybe not. Silver, Blanco, and Plata are all terms used for tequilas that are what? Again, the term silver, Blanco, and Plata are all terms used for tequilas that are what? All right, so there's the question. Let's go into our bag of tricks. And I think everything else is going to be sort of spicy. So let's go with our least spicy one and get spicier as we go. Move over there, Liquid Death. We were, oh, wait, I know what I didn't do. I didn't do this. This is going to be a mess. All right, here we go. Why didn't you guys remind me? It's still banana. That's banana forward. A punch in the face of banana. Oh. Now the lemon kicks in. The lemon that's in the iced tea kicks in. But again, that's a sour. It's really hard to say because that is a sour ale. The texture kind of fights the iced tea. It almost, it almost has the texture of like if you've ever drinking like pear juice which is kind of pulpy, you know, it's almost that texture. It's okay, not horrible, it doesn't suck, it's not great. Thumbs in the middle, thumbs in the middle on that. Sorry to digress. All right, so next we're going with Chester's. Now, as you know, Chester's, or the product line, the Chester's product line is from Frito-Lay. And it's Chester's because it's Chester Cheeto, which is the mascot for Cheetos. I know. Why not just call it Cheetos? I, I don't know. I don't know. And I, I don't work for Frito-Lay. I can't tell you that. So, again, uh, these are ranch-flavored Chester's fries. I don't know that we've done a Chester's fries before. We may have done a Chester's fries once before, but I know that we did not do a we probably did the hot fries. We probably did not do the ranch one. But I remember doing the ranch one. So um, they are from Frito-Lay. And Frito-Lay, for those of you who don't remember, uh, Frito-Lay was a merger in 1961 of C.E. Doolin, the C.E. Doolin Company, which was founded in San Antonio in 1932, and the H.W. Uh, Lay Company, uh, which was also founded in 1932 but in Nashville, Tennessee. And then Chester's Hot Fries, so that Ch the fries... Um, product was introduced in 1983 so quite a ways afterwards yeah 20 22 years later 
Um, those tequilas are transparent because they are unaged. Oh, okay, that's your answer to the question. Uh, trivia for everybody but Janice, since she will Google it. No, uh, Ice Hand, you are incorrect. She does not always Google it. Janice has Janice has a um, Janice knows a lot as is, but she also has a secret uh, secret weapon that we do not possess, and that is that she has an Ed. She has an Ed. So, like, uh, if she's watching with Ed, Ed hears me ask the question, and he's usually answering the question before I even finish. So, um, so she has an Ed, and then she does look things up, and then she does know things already. So, <clears throat> she is a font of information. Um, what were bone records also known at? What were bone records also known as X-ray records? X-ray records? Bone records? Hmm. I, I, I'm like, I'm like going everywhere on that. I don't know if it's a medical thing. Bone records, like also known as X-ray records. Like you can make a record with an X-ray. I don't know. I don't know that. I would have to look that up. I stand and I'm kind of in the, bit, in the middle of doing something, but I'm sure other people can do that. Um, Russians would take forbidden Western rock and roll music and use the acetate in old X-ray films to bootleg them. Oh, okay. It, use that. Oh, I, I see. So they would they would use the X-rays themselves and put a groove in it, to, which is actually the music, and then play it on it. That'd be cool to kind of find one of those. Uh, like I would think, like if you if you go to like a a rare or used record store, like they might have something like that. When were they? When when was that? Was that like? Uh, during the Cold War, when when was that? Uh, when did that happen? Was well, this Western rock and roll music? So it had to be anywhere from the late '50s through you know the fall of the Soviet Union. So I'm not sure. That's an interesting question. During the Cold War, okay. So hi, Doodle. He's such a neat little doggy. Uh, again, so um, we are going to do ranch flavored Chester's fries. So Doodle, I'm going to have to sit here. Okay, you're gonna be a good boy and sit here because I gotta do these Chester fries, okay? I don't think you can have these dual. Let's see what's in it. Uh, enriched cornmeal, ferrous sulfate, ferrous sulfate, so it's like iron, iron sulfate, uh, niacin, thiamine, mononitrate, riboflavin, folic acid, vegetable oil, whey, and less than 2% buttermilk, onion powder. Nope, can't have this as onion. Uh, salt, garlic powder, has garlic in it, can't have that. Uh, spices, potassium, salt, Chilean salt. They're very, very specific. Chilean salt, natural flavors, monosodium glutamate, sugar, corn flour, skim milk, sodium diacetate, sodium guanolate, sodium insulate, artificial color, blue one, red one, yellow five. Contains milk ingredients. All right. It better contain milk ingredients. It's supposed to be ranch, right? No, dude, we can't have these. It has garlic and onion in it. it smells like ranch dressing. I mean, it really does. <laughs> I just now, I missed it. I just now saw Tom saying, can meat farts from a dog are deadly. Fair warning. Thank you. Uh, it's a good thing I only gave him like a little piece. But still, he never know. Ooh. Oh, wow. Janice, have you, have you done these before? Have you tried these before? Or were you those before? Those are addictive. Definitely got that ranch flavor. I love the texture. It's funny because they almost have it like the texture is somewhere between the baked Cheetos and the other Cheetos. Somewhere in between. I don't, there's no potato in here, so I don't know why they call them fries, but I guess because they're shaped like fries. Hmm. Those are actually pretty good. I won't ruin it for you, Janice, I hope. Oh. Those are pretty tasty. I like those. Those are going to get a thumbs up. No, that's really good. All right. So um, you not, have not reviewed them yet. I, I, hopefully, I will not have spoiled that for you, Janice. 
Um, the question was, silver, blanco, and plata are all terms used for tequila that are what? Uh, let's see. Um, Jenna says those tequilas are transparent because they are unaged. Um, and she looks like she's the only one that answered that. Um, I'm sorry, Janice. The actual question is they are unaged in the answer. Yeah, you got that right. Uh, did you know tequila can only be produced in Mexico? I wonder why that is. My guess is because most tequila comes from the blue agave, and maybe the blue agave only grows in Mexico. I don't know. Or maybe it's like champ champagne, right? Champagne can only come from the champagne region of France. If it does not come from the champagne region of France, you cannot call it champagne. Ha 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 you know what I mean? You know what I mean, Doodle? He's such a cute little doggy. He's a good boy. Are you a good boy, Doodle? Are you a good boy? You're a good boy. I'm going to have some more of this tea. Because it has that lemon and honey in it for my throat. There we go. All righty. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm sorry. So what do we got? We got three snacks left, right? Okay. Well, let's get a move on it. All right. The coast the, the Costa Rican dish, patacones, features which fruit fried, squashed, and fried again? I know the answer to this because um, they have patacones in Colombia as well. The Costa Rican dish, patacones, there's another name for it. I think some countries call them tostones, I think, if I'm not mistaken. The Costa Rican dish, patacones, features which fried, which fruit fried, squashed, and fried again? So let's put that there. And let's go on to another snack, and we're going to get spicier now. Let's see. Let's go in order of which we think is spicy. Um, I'm guessing that's not crazy spicy. So let's do this. All right. So these are, uh, what are these? Hmm. Oh, these are Amazon chips. Uh, the product line is called Amazon chips. And these are chili picante plantain chips. Plantains are uh, bananas. They're a form of banana. Uh, they're usually a lot bigger. And usually they eat them when they're green or they do things with them when they're green. Uh, these are a product of Peru. Uh, and they're from a company called Inca Crops. And Inca Crops was founded in Lima, Peru in the year 2000. So these are chili picante flavored plantain chips. And again, remember, plantain is just another type, a type of banana. No smell. It does smell hot. Let's put it that way. No, dude, you can't have these. These aren't good for you. It has chili in it. And you don't like that. We found that out the hard way. So, I don't, Tom, I don't know if you remember this while we were filming the fiery burger ring and i was using a scorpion pep uh scorpion pepper cheese and i had cut the cheese the shape of the onion ring and i had it on the table and i was going to use it and doodle jumped up on the bench and grabbed a piece of that cheese and then ran off with it and started eating it scorpion pepper cheese cheese with scorpion pepper in it and um he he ate it and then spent the next 15 minutes like licking his face uh and couldn't get rid of the uh, heat so Wow, those are really light. Do you want another one of these? These are little. You can have one of these. You want one of these? Hmm? You want that? You dropped that. Where did that one go? Here we go. Here we go, dude. Over here. All right. All right. So this does have that fried plantain flavor in it. The chili picante. I'm not very picante. Maybe you have to eat a bunch of them. Sometimes, sometimes things are like that. Things with, with pepper and things with some heat in it. You have to eat a few of them before you actually catch that, that pepper flavor. Which reminds me, Julie, are you still there? If you're there, say you're still there. I want to mention something. Now, these are nice. They have a nice crunch to them. They have nice flavor. Um, 
I'm just a little bit disappointed because it's chili picante. It's not very picante. Picante is like spicy, right? It's not very spicy. It's really, really subtle. So I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in that. But again, as far as the flavor goes, as far as the texture goes and everything, it don't taste stale. Um, nice texture. So I'm, that's going to get a thumbs up trending downward. It, maybe if it was a little bit spicier, everything would get a full thumbs up. But it's a little bit lacking in the spice department. Um, the question was, the Costa Rican dish patacones features which fruit fried, squashed, and fried again? Uh, the answers were, or the guesses were, none. Nobody guessed. Oh, no, no. Janice guessed plantains. Um, Janice, you are correct. Plantains. We were just eating. <laughs> we were just eating them. So I, maybe that was a, like a giveaway or something. But, uh, but, but actually, um, they say squash. They're actually mashed. So they fry them, they mash them, and then they fry them again. Um, in Colombia, uh, patacones, uh, basically, they have some restaurants that just do patacones. And they what they do is they'll they'll do them about that size, and then they'll put different things on top of it. They'll put chicken on top of it, and they might put kinds of fruit on it or vegetables or something on top of that. And so you can order the patacones with different things on top of it. Uh, a lot of times, they'll just serve it as a side dish. When we were in Cartagena, we went to one restaurant where we ordered the a whole fried fish, and it came with a side of patacones. So each one was about that big, and um, and you just you know ate it as a side dish and everything. So really good. If you have not tried them, you should. Um, this is very close to that. So this is what they use. They use plantains, which are just imagine there's a bunch of these all together that form a banana shaped thing, and that's where they come from. So, but but again. Um, they uh, fry them, they mash them. I think they add butter, if I'm not mistaken. They add butter to them, they fry them, they mash them, and they fry them again. And that's patacones. Or tostones in some countries. We call them tostones. So there we go. Did you know plantains are also known as cooking bananas? Because they're cooking. I guess. I don't know. All righty. You guys are quiet out there. I'm just hoping you're still there. You got really quiet. All right. The question is, sauerkraut is a fermented form of which vegetable? These are seem like easy questions today. Sauerkraut is a fermented form of which vegetable? All right. So let's go in back in here. They're getting a little spicier. Let's do the... That's supposed to be really hot. This is going to be sweet and hot. Let's go with this one. So this is from Snack Club. We have done uh, Snack Club snacks before. I'm trying to remember where I got this. I think I got this at a liquor store, like a convenience store. I think that that's where you get most of the Snack Club stuff at the convenience store. But this is tahine, chili, and lime apple rings. So they're apple rings with chili and lime. It's, it's like an apple fruit flavored thing, except I think the apple is artificial flavor, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, yeah, it says apple rings artificially flavored. The chili and lime, apparently. It, oh, okay. So it says tahin chili and lime. Tahin is chili and lime and salt. So that's where the chili and lime comes from. So it's not artificial because it has tahin in it. And uh, they're artificial flavored apple rings. Uh, apple flavored gummy candy sprinkled with tahin, chili, and lime seasoning. Uh, this is saying mild. Right here. Let's see if you can see that. Mild. Uh, Gluten-free, it is vegan, uh, flavorful pairing for at-home snacking or on-the-go, snack club tahine apple rings are perfect for those who have a sweet tooth but want a bit of savory kick, seasoned with tahine's bold chili lime flavor. These apple ring gummies are one of our best create, creatively, creative, uh, how creatively, creatively crafted treats aimed to please you now and forever. Well, you know, if it was creative, they crafted, crafted treats. You'd actually use apple. Uh, apple ingredients, uh, sugar, glucose syrup, corn syrup, fumaric acid, citric acid, because there's citric acid in everything. I scared Doodle on that one. Um, it says apple flavor. That's weird. It says apple flavor, but on the outside, it says artificially flavored. So I don't know. I mean, maybe it's artificial apple flavor. Titanium dioxide, artificial colors. Um Classico seasoning, whatever that is, that is. Chili peppers, sea salt, citric acid. Again, because there's citric acid and everything. Um, 
lime juice, silicon dioxide, silicon, corn syrup solids, tapioca syrup, solids, cornstarch, and water. All right. So uh, Snack Club is a product line from Century Snacks. So that Century Snacks was founded in 1984 by Hadi Morshed in Vernon, Connecticut. He was a uh, Mexican immigrant um, that founded the company in 1984. I'm trying to remember what he was uh, originally... Uh, he had this original product, but I can't remember what exactly what it was. But all right, they don't smell like apple. That's that's it. Oh, those are chewy. Those are stick to your teeth chewy. Uh, yeah, those are stick to your teeth chewy. Wow. Mm-hmm. Those are like juju bees stick to your teeth, uh, chewy. It's like annoying stick to your teeth, chewy. These are really good if you want to shut somebody up. Put a bowl of these in front of them. Try those. Not much apple flavor. I'm getting to the tajin, right? Really, and again, that tajin, that's T-A-J-I-N, which is a Spanish word, tajin. I think it's a made up word. I don't think it's an actual word, tajin. That part of it's really good. The gummy part of it's good. It's really chewy, kind of like jujube, like stick in your teeth, chewy. Um, just wish it had more um, apple flavor. I mean, actual apple flavor. Seems like it wouldn't be that difficult. Uh, I would I would go with like a Granny Smith apple, a really tart Granny Smith apple, but it's kind of lacking in there. Uh, I'm gonna get give those a thumbs in the middle. Needs more apple flavor. So, and they had different ones. They had different, like the same kind of thing, but they had different fruit flavors. So I thought I would try the apple one. I'm a little bit disappointed in the lack of apple flavor. So thumbs in thumbs in the middle on that one. I think. Uh, Jared, what did you think? You've had those. What did you think of that, Jared? All right, so let's go back and read our card. The question was, sauerkraut is a fermented form of which vegetable? Um, now, Janice Yamanak said plantains, but I think she was guessing on the previous one uh, because afterwards she said cabbage. Icehand said cabbage for cranky Germans. Jared said cabbage. You are all correct. It is, in fact, cabbage. Did you know some people believe that sauerkraut was brought to Europe by Genghis Khan? Did you know that? Well, it kind of makes sense um, if you've ever had kimchi, right? I mean, Genghis Khan was from Mongolia. Mongolia is like right underneath China. It's sort of in the, um, what are those mountains? Um, where Everest is, not mountain range, the Himalayas, in the Himalayas. It's very close to the Himalayas where Genghis Khan was from. Um, Korea is a lot farther east, northeast. It is almost on the ed the very, very tip of Asia. Uh, there's a little bit of Russia on top of that. But other than that, <clears throat> it is like the last country in Asia before, you know, the the Russia that that is like 20 something miles away from from um, Alaska. So uh, maybe they were eating something like sauerkraut in um, in Mongolia, maybe. So it's not that far-fetched, but I guess there's no proof of it. So it says some people believe uh, they're not going to risk their lives on it. Tahin means thunder or smoke. Huh, interesting. Uh, thumbs in the middle for me also. Yeah, for that same reason, Jared, because it lacks the apple flavor. I don't know. All right, so we have, what do we have left? We have one left. Now we're doing on time, 246. I think we're doing good. I think we're doing okay. So let's go ahead and read our last question. And the question is, um, sudados and dorados are flavor are varieties of which food? Again, sudados and dorados are varieties of which food? There's a dorado fish, and they're not talking about fish. Well, not directly. All right, so let's do our last snack.
And this is from Spudzy. And these are hot fry sweet potato fries. So they're sweet potato fries. I think they're they're fries in the same way as the um, Andy Cat fries or the same way as the uh, Chester's fries, that same kind of fries. But these are made from sweet potato. And these are hot fry sweet potato fries. So they're spicy, allegedly. Uh, this is from the, the company is Spudzy. Spudzy was founded in 2018 by Ashley Rogers in Costa Mesa, California, which is just over the border into uh, Orange County. Uh, exactly, Ice Hand. It's sort of like liquor. I don't even know her. All right, so these are spudzy sweet potato fries, hot fries made with a blend of potato and sweet potato flour. So they use regular potatoes, I guess. Uh, ingredients, potato starch, sweet potato flour, uh, vegetable oil, uh, let's see, tapioca, maltodextrin, salt, paprika, yeast extract, tomato powder, onion. That's odd, tomato powder. I would not have figured that. Onion powder, garlic powder, which means you can't have any do I'm sorry. Uh, citric acid, because there's citric acid in everything. Uh, annatto. Uh, annatto is a coloring. It is a yellow coloring that comes from marigolds, marigold petals. Uh, they, feed, they, use, they feed marigold pe uh, petals to chickens so that chickens have that yellow skin. That's what annatto is. Uh, gum, acacia, natural flavors, lactic acid, paprika extract, calcium lactate. La lactate? La yeah, lactate. Where's the hot stuff? This says hot fry. Maybe hot fry means something else because I'm not seeing anything like anything with the word pepper in it. Anything, I mean, it's odd. It says hot fry. Maybe this means hot heat, like not hot spice. I don't know. Panama Red has just entered the room. Welcome, Panama. I've not seen you in a while. It's good to see you again. Glad you could join us. I don't think it's spicy. Mm -mm. Garlic and onion in that, dude. Don't want to get you sick because I now have to clean up. Now that's bizarre. It has it has a capsaicin kick. But it doesn't list anything that would have capsaicin in it and in the ingredients. Nice crunch, but it's because it's a blend. When they use like potato starch. Good flavor, <clears throat> good level of heat. That heat builds. It's a nice level of heat. There's a tanginess to it, like a tanginess aftertaste. Maybe that's the from the tomato. And then there's that. There's like a vinegar taste. And I remember saying acetic acid. I did not. Lactic acid. Citric acid, not acetic acid, but it almost tastes like, almost has like a vinegar taste to it. Those are good. I like that. I like that blend, that regular potato blend with the sweet potato. The blend level of heat's really nice. It's like probably just at the level of somebody who that like can't take a lot of heat, heat hot stuff. Probably just at that level. That's really good, really flavorful and everything. And that's going to get a thumbs up from me. All right. So the question was, sudados and dorados are varieties of which food? Uh, let's see. Janice Yamanaka said tacos. Janice, Janice Yamanaka appears to be the only one that answered the question. The correct answer is, in fact, tacos. Uh, did you know the taco predates the arrival of the Spanish in Mexico? Yeah, most likely, which is why it's a regional thing and not something that they would eat in Spain. All right, that's all our snacks. So that means it is time, all of you trippies, it is time on our show when we do Goop Melange. All right, so I think I'm gonna cut this up. And I think one is probably okay. So here is our Snack Club Tajin Apple Rings. You would have to cut that, let's see. These were kind of a disappointment to me. Again, you're going to say something tastes like apple, make it taste like apple. All right. 
Now our uh, organic carrot chew. And a lot of like gummy and chewy stuff here. Um, we'll see. Might have to do two. We'll see. Look at that. That's the. That's like that carrot. Pe the carrot part of it. Well, I'm gonna put in another one. Ooh, that has a really strong carrot smell. Is that what you smell, Doodle? Huh? Is that what you smell? And they look like giant raisins, which is really weird. Because the carrots. And how does the carrot look like a raisin? Beats me. All right, that's good. Now this, this was the one that they told us, only two a day. We already had one. So these are our beet gummies. I don't know why, only one a day. We'll figure it out later. If we can ever get this thing open. So only one. You got to abide by the rules. Ooh, does that smell good to you? Huh? Does that smell good to you? Well, those are the ones that look like little gumdrops. And again, there's not really a lot of this that's going to flavor this. But again, they say only two a day. I don't know why, but you know, let's not throw caution to the wind on that one. <clears throat> Thank you guys for sticking with us. Those of you who have, looks like we only have seven people left, but we appreciate everybody. Um, here is the Revenadas from Bimbo. I'm just gonna break some pieces of this off, I think. That's how we're going to do it. Should just break apart, and it does. And it's all over my hands. And it's all over everywhere. But I do have water. Do I have napkins? Yes, I do have napkins. So I'm going to wash my hands off because I have toast all over my hands. But I've got a lot of other dry stuff, so it's not the last. Uh, I'm going to leave this up to you. I'm going to let you go. You know that little tail going in the, back, in the background there. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to leave this up to you. Let me know, those of you who are left. Do you want me to put one of those dog treats in there? I will do that. I'm going to leave it up to you. Should I put a dog treat in there? Janice says yes. Anybody else? There's still time. Doodle, don't be eating stuff off the floor there. Most of the stuff isn't good for you. All right, and now the ranch fries. Miguel says yes. Isan says yes. We are going to put a dog treat in there. You spoke. We listened. All right. And now the – these are going to be difficult. These are going to be difficult, I think. Let's see if these break apart. These are the plantain chips. Oh, okay. Maybe not so much. There we go. Is that everything? That is not everything. Got stuff everywhere. Our corned beef. Let's see. Let's try this. I'm just going to shave some on it in there. Could use a cheese grater. I think I'm going to make this make I'm going to try using this for breakfast tomorrow I think I'm trying to think it I think I don't think really think there's going to be anything that's going to be like off-putting in here I think for the most part it's going to be okay and I got corned beef all over the place 
everywhere. Corned beef. All right, there we go. And last but not least, a dog treat. Did I miss where you mix the two beverages? Uh, you might have ice hand. Uh, I uh, I kind of like uh, started reading the question for the next thing and forgot that I didn't do that. Um, so you might have missed that. These dog treats don't break up very easily. They're pretty solid. All right, there we go. So let's get our spoon ready. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Goop Melange, or at least our weekly version of it. And I am I am planning and aiming to bring you actual Goop Melange as shown on the television show, The Odd Couple, featuring Tony Randall and Jack Klugman. All right, there we go. Really colorful. Here we go. Hmm. You would think that that corned beef would mess up the flavors of everything, but it doesn't. Like you would think it wouldn't go well with the the, the um, tahin apple rings, but there's no there's no clash there. I bit the inside of my mouth. I bit the inside of my mouth again. I did it earlier today. This is a bizarre snack mix, but for some reason it works. No one think it would. The plantains are nice, nice texture. Nice flavor from the two fries. I'm going to stop only because I keep biting the inside of my mouth where I bit it before, which I hate. All right. That's it. I'm not going to eat anything else. I don't want to keep biting my mouth. That's actually going to get a thumbs up. A lot of good flavors in there. I don't think I would want to make it again. I don't think I would want to make it as something that I would serve or even have it as a snack. But all those flavors together really complement each other, even the meat, which is really bizarre and odd. So yeah, that's going to get a thumbs up for me. I appreciate you guys sticking around. We're at three o'clock. Um, we had kind of a small crew today, but like I said earlier, I don't care how many people we have. We have two people. We're still doing a live stream because it is the high point of my week. And I hope that it's the high point of some of your week. Maybe not the high point, but I just hope that it's entertaining, maybe a little bit educational and, and definitely fun for you guys as well. So um, I love the camaraderie that we have. I love the community that we built here. You guys are all great. I mean that sincerely. Um, and uh, and I thank you all for participating. So like I said, I don't care if it's a small number. Um, I really, really appreciate the people that are that are here. Uh, it's, we built a really, really good community and, and I appreciate every single one of you uh, joining us every week. So all right, I got something stuck in my mouth. So again, I thank you. Um, if you have not subscribed and you watch our live streams and you watch our episode, please do subscribe. It definitely helps us out. And when you do subscribe, there's three buttons that you can press. There's one with a bell with little things on it. And if you select that, anytime we come out with an episode, anytime we run a, we post some, something that, that has a release date on it, you're going to be notified of that. So that's important and helps. If you would watch our videos and you enjoy our videos, please hit the like button and also be sure to check out the other channels that we support as well. Um, I wouldn't ask you to do that if I didn't like the channels myself and I didn't think that they were great channels. Janice Yamanaka, Tom, old guy in Colorado, um, even like uh, Reckless Eating or um, uh, LA Beast or uh, John's channel. And I always get those words mixed up. Uh, it's uh, brewed, reviewed, no, it's distilled, brewed, and reviewed. Definitely check his channel out. He does like coffee reviews. He does uh, uh, wine reviews and stuff like that. Really, really good channel. Definitely check it out. And be sure when you check those channels out that you 
uh, subscribe to them. Now, if you don't know who they are or those, what those channels that we suggest are, if you go to our main page on YouTube and you go down to featured channels and look in there, they're all listed in there. So definitely check those out and definitely like those if you get, if you get a chance. Again, I, I do appreciate you taking time out of your weekend to, to spend with us. And um, I look forward to it every week. It is the high point of my week. And I and like I said, I hope that we bring some joy to you, we, that we bring some laughter to you, um, maybe even, you know, have you learn something or anything. But it's it's fun. And I love every one of you. I thank you for joining us and uh, really appreciate your support. So thank you all so much. Uh, have a great rest of your weekend. We don't have Greg from tomorrow here, so his weekend is already over, but we don't have Greg joining us. But the rest of us, there's maybe a little bit left of the weekend. Try to enjoy the rest of the weekend, and I hope you have a great week. We will see you soon. But remember that it's crazy out there, so please be careful. Take care of yourselves, take care of others, and we'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.